Okay, I think, I think we're good. I think we're good. My phone's telling me that I can't rotate. Can you guys see me properly? This is so weird. So, so weird. Hmm. Hold on. It's telling me that I can't do this, and I don't know why. All right. I'll try this. Is that better? Okay. You're sideways. Okay. Addison, you... This is your fault, because you said that you can't rotate the phone, but I always do my phone the other direction, which is really, really weird. I think it must be a setting somewhere. Okay. Fine. We're going to do conscious coffee this direction then today. That's fine. Everybody can see my coffee cup. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning to the computer, too, over there. So, this morning's topic is, uh, you're awake. Yay, congratulations. Congratulations, you're awake. I'm not talking about actually physically being awake, although, yay, we're awake. For those of us who are watching at six something in the morning, um, then uh, if you started the live the other way, it won't let it flip. Oh. <laughs> I guess maybe I started the live the other way. I don't know. Um, it's too early in the morning. Everybody else is awake. I'm not awake. There you go. I was up late. And I was up throughout the night, too, with kids with who had limbs that they fell asleep on that were hurting them in the middle of the night. And there was tears and crying. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. All these tears and crying and this misery and feeling like their body was, you know, tingly and numb and all this good stuff. Not so good stuff. So as I jolted them out of their sleep, you know, from, from this, like they were in the it was Gabriel, my five-year-old, and he was in kind of like this trance state of being while, while he's laying there crying because, because he had gone to bed and like flipped over in bed on top of his shoulder and hand and everything had fallen asleep. So then he's crying because he, he has all this numbness and those, you know, the pins and then the tickle and all that good stuff. And at the same time, he was not really fully conscious because he was in this dream state. So, which is very similar to the topic that I'm talking about because the topic of, yay, you're awake, congratulations, is not a topic of good morning. Um, it's not that. It's not, hey, good morning. What it is is that when we talk about enlightenment, when we talk about waking up, and, and what does that mean? And we, we're in this, we're at a very interesting point in our world where I can legitimately say that over the last 25 years, for sure, that I have seen more and more people wake up, you know, become enlightened the majority of people don't become enlightened for the long haul, for a long time. They go through this wake up period and that period sometimes is just a flicker uh, in, a, in time, just a few moments. And when other people experience it for you know, the course of a couple weeks or a couple months or a couple years and then you have people that get on the enlightenment path and they start to... They, they, they really dive into it and, and they can hold that path and see reality for what it is. And that's what enlightenment is, is it's not any higher state of being that makes you better than somebody else or now you're suddenly a, some spiritual guru person or, or, you know, master teacher, you're not all of a sudden Jesus, um, <laughs> or Gandhi, or Buddha, or, or, you know, somebody else, Mother Teresa, right? It's not that. It, a state of enlightenment to wake up means that you, 
if only for that brief moment, see the interconnectedness of all of reality and you let go of the, the state of reality, the illusion of reality that, that you've been living in, that the ego has painted for you, where you see separateness in everything. So our ego teaches us and shows us, it paints this, this illusion for us, puts a veil over, that we can't really see how everything is connected. And what it does is it, it makes us feel like everything is sectioned off and segregated, separate, separated. Oh, hold on. Oh my goodness. My phone, it is having issues this morning. It's not enlightened. It is having issues. It just got paused. Funny enough, it says that it says like, your broadcast has been paused and my phone went to my calendar and it tried to show me what I was doing in later in the month and it tried to show me everything happens for a reason it's actually very much on point on topic and that is that you know that that's exactly what the ego does makes these loud noises and you know doo -doo, and will throw us try to throw us out of seeing the truth of any given moment and an enlightened person remains as conscious as possible throughout that process. They remain as conscious as possible throughout that process and consistently, not always, but consistently see the interconnectedness of all of life and how everything flows together. Where the majority of people consistently don't see that. They only see the separation in everything. As in themselves, they, they compartmentalize everything within their own being. They compartmentalize everything in, in the world in general, you know, relationships. And they only look at relationships from, and this is my relationship here with you, with you, with you. They don't see that there is a relationship with every single thing in life. And relationship in general is talking about not separation, but this interconnectedness, this flow that we, that we have with each other and, and with different energies, our thoughts, our emotions, the earth, you know, everything, everything that we are experiencing that, that, that the truth of our, our wellspring, our well-being is really in, in that interconnection. So I'm going to take a sip of coffee. I should kind of like Facebook live like this. This is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> for first thing in the morning, I might do this a couple of times. Um, what I was saying at the beginning of this though, was that over the last 25 years, I've really started to see more people wake up and experience this realization, which is the awakening of that interconnectedness and and embrace like have this aha moment where they've been startled out of that sleep kind of like I, start, I was talking about like Gabe falling asleep on his hand last night right and he had all these prickly pins and and his reality in that moment was that his hand his arm whatever was asleep was very separate from him because it felt like another something completely different than the rest of his body. It was weightier. It was, it was, you know, it was, it had a different sensation to it. It was fear. It was scary to him. And he was still in this state of asleep, but he had been jolted out of it to a degree because of this, like, oh my goodness, the something feels different. Something feels different. He had a different perception about his, his physical being in that moment. And even though he wasn't able to fully come through it 
in that moment, he still had that perception there. And that's exactly what happens to us in, in this waking up period that, that a lot of people go through. And when I see people going through is that we, we basically, it's like we're jolted out of this dream that we don't even realize that we're having. And we wake up to it and we're like, oh my God, like I was dreaming all this time. I've been dreaming. And this is the truth. This is the reality here. This is what's really going on. And we're like, wow, wow. You know, like, have you had that wow moment? Have you had that moment where, where maybe it's not consistent, where you're not seeing it all the time. You feel still very separate from everything, but you have had that moment where you just feel like everything is perfect. Everything is in harmony. You are this beautiful piece of the world of spirit. You can feel God flowing through you. You can feel yourself in, in the world, in the universe, and you can see how everything that you are thinking, feeling, and doing is kind of part of this grander scheme. So it's kind of like my comment of everything happens for a reason. That is, that is a statement of that everything is interconnected. There is nothing separating me from you, you from so-and-so. The events that happen with, with our electronics, with, you know, with different decisions that are made in the world, with whatever happens throughout the day, all of that stuff is woven together in in perfect beauty for the our for each of our highest and greatest good it is part of the truth of of reality not a separation that we tend to experience I guarantee that once we get out there and like i mean i'll even experience it that while i'm driving to the office later today that you know that there's going to feel like there's this separation while I'm driving and probably somebody tries to cut me off or something. There's going to feel like there's this jolting separateness there. So in the state of, of enlightenment that we can experience, and I really don't like the term enlightenment, but I think everybody understands that it really is, um, Waking, waking up is, I think waking up is kind of a better statement because I like that like, dream analogy. Um, there's a whole lot of shit that happens when we wake up. There really is. And that's where my congratulations, Jay, you're awake comment comes from because, um, we, we think, oh, I want to get, I want to become enlightened. I want to become, you know, this, I want to become that. And we think that the path of the enlightened one that is is this groovy awesome peaceful path that we've been told about and everything is going to be like organic chocolate and roses and and perfection and we're going to know know the direction all the time and signs are going to just come to us and we're going to understand them and we're going to suddenly have answers for everything. And it's just going to be amazing. You know, all our struggle, all our trouble is just going to magically disappear because we're now enlightened. We're now enlightened. Yay, we're enlightened. I can see the interconnectedness. I can, I've, I've um, felt the hand of God on me. I've tasted all the beautiful yumminess of this enlightened path. And then we get into it and we're like, oh, holy fuck, this can't be enlightened because my life just got a hell of a lot harder. I've just got a hell of a lot harder. And that's the thing is when you wait, if you just wake up for a flicker in time, your life gets a little bit harder. It's like, I tell people all the time, are you sure you want this? Are you sure you want coaching? Are you sure you want to learn about these things? Are you sure you want to experience this? Because there's no going back. Once you step over that threshold, and you start to experience things, there's no turning around. You can turn around, but your stakes, your discomfort is going to be so great by trying to step back through that door into the land of, of the blind, um, deaf and dumb on top of it. it, it 
it, it's horribly miserable and painful and you eat, you, you just destroy yourself in that. Trust me, I've tried to do it. I've tried to do it. I did that in my 20s a lot. I, I wavered back and forth um, trying to step back into what I perceived as this place of comfort and safety and what was socially acceptable and give up any strange feelings or thoughts or things that I was doing or practicing reading even just to fit in and oh my god it was it was like nails on a chalkboard on steroids every single breath that I took because I could not I, I just I I was in a state that I saw all of the way everybody was was trying to cause separation and suffering and then and talk about seeing dysfunction it was I saw dysfunction everywhere and it was horrible my ego came in and really really was like whoo hoo you're back for the party okay let's really mess with you let's really mess with you so I I found myself kind of in this role of well like a superiority complex right like I I was over there in the land of the enlightened and I've made the decision to come back through this doorway and be with all you small people and you know like this is this is just where it's at so I had this superiority shit going on so I couldn't relate to anybody and I shut myself down because everybody was pissing me off and and just I, I was just like why are you doing that why are you doing this why are you doing that why do you choose to suffer why do you choose to put yourself in those shoes and I would just you know like say things that were not okay to say to definitely like just people that I shouldn't have been trying to even save I guess um it was just bad it was bad and it threw me into a really really bad deep depression because my only way through it was trying to block it and I realized that I could not I couldn't help anybody and I felt like I couldn't help myself and that nobody cared either but the only other option was to wake up again and that was so scary and felt like I was floating around out there all by myself and that nobody understood these concepts of or perceptions that I was seeing and it was just it was it was rough it was really really rough it was a very lonely lonely path which in general is exactly what happens to anybody who chooses to set foot through through that doorway of waking up and and actually seeing reality for what it is and and saying goodbye to the ego illusions for the most part because we all have ego illusions all the time they're always infecting our day with their silliness um, so as as you as you wake up you're gonna feel very lonely and that's you know like yay you're awake and now you're alone now you're going to feel the aloneness which goes completely against everything that you are experiencing in the wake up process so it's very very interesting you have you have this complete feeling of like two different worlds at one time coming together because you you feel in that wake up process you go oh i see the interconnection and everything and i feel so alone over here all by myself because nobody else sees what i'm seeing maybe i'm crazy maybe i'm crazy yep that's it i'm i've got to be crazy you know michael murdad he has a book it's a little itty bitty book and I don't see it on my bookshelf so that it must be at the office um it has a little book and it says um the title of it is you're not going crazy you're just you're just waking up 
I think that's I think that's the title of the book. It's a little blue book. But my Colmar died. And I think it's something like that. You're not going crazy, you're just waking up. Fantastic little book because he goes through all these little things like this right here. Like you start seeing different things and you're like, I must be going crazy because this can't be happening. This can't be reality. And yet it is. And once you start seeing reality for what it is, life gets a lot easier and life gets a lot harder. The stakes go up because if you step back through that door, it's going to be total hell. I mean, in the Bible, it talks about that, you know, heaven and hell is right here on earth with us now. And welcome to hell right there. Hell is is waking up and then making a choice to step back through that door and living in the land of the of the blind, the deaf and the and the dumb back there in what they perceive as reality instead of what reality really is. So it gets really really interesting. And I guess what I'm doing here in this conscious coffee, I guess it could be more like true share Wednesday or something. I don't know. Um so there's a lot, I have a lot of people coming to me right now that are going through some beautiful, beautiful experiences. Like they are dancing with spirit in so many beautiful ways. And they are, they are seeing all these incredible results and tasting this life that they didn't even know was out there. And it just happens consistently. And, and I am so happy for them. It's a beautiful experience to to witness as as a coach and a friend and you know just their sister in life to see that but I I also kind of go oh be careful be careful because at some point like the illusion of ego is going to come up and try to swat at you and if it swats at you which it will, and if it actually hits, then you're like gonna crash for a second, and will you get back up? Will you get back up? Because right now, I do see a lot of people also kind of going and doing that, you know, I'm enlightened thing as well, and I think that that's a big part of the process that we go through is that we, we do step into, I'm, superior to everybody because I've experienced the truth and now I know and you don't know and I'm going to help you wake up to it but we kind of get this like cockiness going on about what we what we know and what we believe nobody else knows when in truth it's right there accessible for everybody and the best way to help others to wake up to their truth and to the truth of, of life is to just get down and dirty and be very real and, and open, authentic, vulnerable, vulnerable with, with everybody in our lives. It's because if we can live in a state of vulnerability and share from our deepest heart, then, then we're showing our truth and we're showing how everything is interconnected and that the beauty of enlightenment is not is not that everything all your troubles go away it's not that they just cease and stop it's that you can see the beautiful essence of God even in the darkest hours you can experience you can experience a rapture of love and joy even when you're in what out what the illusion wants you to see as misery and suffering that there is there is this this dance and this path working through everything constantly leading us and it's like every single obstacle is truly just a detour taking us in in a direction towards our highest and greatest good that we actually need to take because of where we're at in life, the things that we need to heal, the things that we still need to awaken to, the things that we need to learn and experience or remember, as I like to say, um, that we really need to just remember because we hold everything inside of us we just choose to not open those books of knowledge 
that we store within ourselves. We, we hide from them because of the illusions. So, um, let's see. I was trying to go through and see. I know if I can find a quote here. Of, and I didn't know what direction I was going to take this, so I kind of just... Maybe there isn't a quote here. Maybe there isn't. Let me see. Oh, wait. There's something highlighted. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, ultimately, all the images we have about ourselves and the world turn out to be nothing but a resistance to things as they are. I'm going to read that again. Ultimately, all the images we have about ourselves and the world turn out to be nothing but a resistance to things as they are. So that is um, from Shanti, uh, the book, The End of Your World. I read that book, gosh, seven, eight years ago, whenever it first came out, maybe longer. I don't know. Um, you need to reread it, actually. It's a fantastic book, fantastic book. Very, very eye-opening, big time truth teller. Talk about a spiritual baseball bat, that man. He carries one with him everywhere he goes, I think. But the statement of, you know, that, that basically the images that we see, how we perceive things from our ego mind, and when we are fully in our ego mind is nothing more than our resistance shields to the truth and here's the thing that resistance shield to the truth is also our resistance to to ease to joy to love to fully embracing all the blessings to fully embracing ourselves so the more we allow ego to paint the picture to cast this veil over us, it, it prevents us from experiencing everything, everything that's out there. And we can be enlightened and have these, have these moments where that comes down and we get caught up in, in ego and we can't, can't see clearly. So we have these resistance, that resistance, that friction that pops up. Or we can just kind of live in that resistance. And, and I always say, you know, you can tell exactly where somebody's at by how much resistance is in their life. Because if you have, I mean, we all have resistance. We're never going to get away from it. That's part of, that's part of life. That's part of what our, our learning. And different, as we dig deeper within ourselves, then we all of a sudden we come up against a little resistance, something that we need to release, something that we need to shine a light on, see the truth in. And so while we're trying to figure out how to see our truth in that, we have resistance there and then all of a sudden it's gone and there's easy flow. So if somebody has a massive amount of resistance in their life, so shit's just not going really good at all, they're really in a like wherever that is at, wherever you feel friction and resistance, there's a lot of truth and light that you need to reveal and you're basically blocking it with your ego. So it's like, no, 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 I want to, I want to go there. I want to see that, but I'm going to just kind of look like this and, and claim that I'm walking that way and seeing the truth, but I'm not really going to see the truth. So you like every now and then you take a little, oops, yep, yep, I'm still on that, yep, I'm still on the path. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I'm going towards it. But you're not really going anywhere because you can't go anywhere that you're not really willing to look at and to focus on and to really tap into. So you're just going to have a bunch of resistance there. And then once you get sick and tired of being sick and tired with that resistance, you turn around and you start paying attention to it. Well, now you've, you've separated it from your life and now you've like segmented it off, right? And you're, you're looking at it and you're like, okay, I'm going to really focus in on this. But you've forgotten about all of this. And the only way you can really truly heal all of this is to crack it open and let it be part of everything. And see the effects of what that resistance 
is in that one particular area, how it shows up in all the other areas of your life. So you can focus in on this, but you have to be consciously aware of its spider web holding to every aspect of your life. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Six o'clock in the morning, who knows if it makes sense. I'll probably watch this later and go, oh my God, girl, like, why the hell did you use that <laughs> analogy? Um, there goes my little guy yelping for me. Hold on, baby. I'll be right there. Okay. He wants more yogurt. Um, he's eating chocolate yogurt this morning. Lucky little dude. Um, so, yeah. So, I guess the moral of this of this morning's conscious coffee is really about looking at where your resistance is, realizing that enlightenment is not always organic chocolate and roses and having sex on the beach, you know, and everything just being woohoo, that you actually do increase your stakes because once you do awaken, if only for a brief second, that going back is going to be a little bit rougher of a rougher of a gig. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. Pay attention if you're if you're bouncing around with that superiority complex stuff. Where's your cockiness at? Are you operating because that cockiness is coming from headspace, not heart space? Definitely not what spirit is about at all. Spirit's about interweaving and full full on connection with everything. And if you have resistance in your life, which we all do, um, congratulations. You know exactly where your work is at because that's exactly what it's there for. And if you are have resistance in your life, lean into that area, shine the light on it, dig around, and get right with seeing the truth of whatever is trying to come through to you there. It may, it's not going to happen overnight probably, but it is the signs, the things that you need to learn to take yourself into a deeper space of awakening to shine that light there and fully embody yourself a little bit more. Those signs, the messages are all around you. They're, they're coming to you. God is trying to tell you exactly what you need to learn, do, and experience, surrender to in those spaces. It's just a matter of learning exactly what that might mean. So... As for clarity, tap in, look for signs in other parts of your life. If you're having resistance here, realize that there is that spider web and it is connected to other areas of your life. So you might get the clarity that you need by taking your focus for a second off of here and looking for where it's showing up in other parts of your life so that you can actually look at the pattern instead of just what the issue might be. So, okay. My munchkin is crying again. I think something else fell asleep. And he wants his yogurt. Um, so I love you guys. I will catch you tomorrow around 6 a.m. ish for another conscious coffee. Until then, hit the share button right down there. I guess it's so weird to end like from this angle. I do lives all the time from this angle, but I don't do conscious coffee from this angle. So hit the live right down there on the bottom. Share, you know, tag a friend. Give me some love um, by hitting like or love or all that good stuff. Share this in maybe one of your favorite groups or something or on or on your wall. And as always, if you feel like sharing a comment here or messaging me private, that's fine too. I love getting your comments. I love hearing your little tales, your stories, all that good stuff. And yeah, so just go go look at your resistance and... Congratulations, you're awake. If only for a moment you've woken up. You're listening to this. You're listening to this conscious coffee. That means that you've had a moment of awakening someplace, a moment of enlightenment someplace. So that shift is happening and it is a beautiful thing because ultimately it's exactly what all of us need to do in in our world today is wake up so that we can move our world into a better state of being. And we're moving there whether we want to or not, whether we partake in it or not. It's just how how active we want to be in this journey called life. So I love you guys and I will catch you tomorrow.